Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be demonstrating the testing involved that goes into declaring a vehicle's tow rating. In other words, how are tow ratings determined? Well, that question used to have a very subjective answer based on which truck company you were asking, but the major players in heavy duty trucking put together a standard SAE J2807, which includes a series of tests that the trucks must pass at their rated load. So the demonstrations in this video are taking place at FCA's Chelsea Proving Grounds in Michigan, and our demo vehicle is a Ram 3500 4x4 with the optional 6.7 liter inline six Cummins turbo diesel, 400 horsepower, and a thousand pound-feet of torque. It will be towing a trailer with ballast added, weighing 30,645 pounds for a gross combined weight of the truck and trailer just under 40,000 pounds, targeting to max out the combined weight rating for the truck. Now, I've divided these tests into four different categories, acceleration, braking, handling, and cooling. And so for each of these tests, we're gonna talk about what is the minimum requirement in order to pass, and then I'm gonna be using a V-Box and actually measuring what did the 3500 achieve in our demonstration. All right, starting things off with acceleration at the vehicle's max weight rating, it needs to be able to pass several different acceleration tests. So a zero to 30 miles per hour in 12 seconds if it has single rear wheels, 14 seconds if it has dual rear wheels, zero to 60 in 30 seconds and 35 seconds respectively, and then passing power, it needs to be able to accelerate from 40 miles per hour to 60 miles per hour in 18 or 21 seconds, again, depending on the number of rear wheels on each side. So if it's a dually running at 21 seconds, if it's got single rear wheels running at 18 seconds. So looking at the actual results, when we ran this test with the 3500, it achieved zero to 30 miles per hour in 8.5 seconds. So well under uh, the spec there, zero to 60 in 28 0.3 seconds, again, crushing it, even if it were to have single rear wheels, and then 40 to 60 in 15.5 seconds. Now, if you're looking at this and you're thinking, okay, zero to 60 in 28.3 seconds is an eternity. Yes, compared to like an average car out there, 28 seconds, zero to 60 is not good. Uh, but we're gonna do a little analysis to kind of give you a better frame of reference of what this number means. So if you look at the Dodge Demon, uh, which weighs 4,000, about 4,300 pounds, and has 840 horsepower, and has a weight to power ratio of five pounds per horsepower. Our truck here is 40,000 pounds combined and it has 400 horsepower. In other words, 100 pounds of weight per horsepower. So 20 times uh, the ratio versus this Dodge Demon. It's 20 times worse as far as its power to weight ratio. And yet it's zero to 60 times is only 12 times worse. So, you know, looking under the curve, that thousand pound feet of torque, actually really helping this thing provide actually pretty solid acceleration when you're considering that it's moving 40,000 pounds of weight. Another acceleration test that the vehicle has to pass is a grade launch. So sitting on a 12% grade, the truck needs to be able to launch five times within five minutes and after each one of those launches, it needs to travel five meters. And so this is kind of simulating if you're stuck in stop and go traffic on a really steep incline. So that's what we're looking at here. Uh, and the demonstration we're looking at, it was actually done on a 15% grade, not a 12% grade, but regardless, able to pass. Uh, and this is just making sure that, you know, you don't have any uh, power issues or heat issues. Uh, the transmission doesn't have any problems going up on a steep grade and then continuing to be able to accelerate the truck up that grade at full load in, you know, perhaps a stop and go traffic scenario. Moving on to our braking performance test, the vehicle needs to be able to come to a complete stop from 20 miles per hour down to zero miles per hour at its rated load in less than 45 feet with the trailer brakes activated and in less than 80 feet without using any trailer brakes. So that's assuming the trailer brakes have completely failed. It still needs to be able to stop all of that weight in less than 80 feet. So we performed this test with the 3500. It was able to stop from 20 to zero in 20 0.6 feet and it was able to stop uh, without using the trailer brakes at all in 51.2 feet. So pretty impressive. Also, once again, well below these standards here. And so you might be looking and saying, wow, why is it two and a half times the distance uh, without using those trailer brakes? So if you start to kind of look at the math involved, you know, the maximum force that this vehicle can decelerate with 
is a function of its tire's frictional coefficient and how much weight do you have resting on those tires. Well, when you have a ton of weight resting on this trailer and your trailer isn't braked, you don't get to use the weight resting on that trailer to help slow you down. You can only create a force in the opposite direction to slow this vehicle down using the portion of the vehicle which you're using the brakes on. So you only have 34% of the weight. Uh, our truck here weighing 13,700 with combined weight of the trailer on it plus the truck itself versus the overall package here at 40,000 pounds. So only 34% of the weight static on that truck itself able to actually slow down the vehicle. Now, yes, you're going to have some weight transfer occur as you slam on the brakes. And so this number will go up as far as the load on it. And you'll have a higher percentage that you're able to slow down with. But regardless, that's explaining why this number here is so much larger than this here. You're putting so much extra stress on those front tires and you're only able to brake with the percentage of weight resting on the vehicle where you're actually using the brakes. Now, on top of all of this, the vehicle has to be able to stay within an 11.5 foot wide track. So this is just simulating a roadway here. You don't want to exit your lane, obviously, under braking. You have to remain in your lane. Another braking test, the parking brake needs to be able to hold the entire weight of the vehicle on a 12% grade. So you park on a 12% grade, you put the transmission in neutral, and you only use the parking brake to hold the vehicle. So just those rear tires need to be able to hold the entire load uh, and truck from moving down, and it needs to do this pointing in both directions. Now for our demonstration, this was actually performed on a 15% grade. Just 3% more uh, may not sound like a whole lot, uh, but the difference in force actually pulling it down is significant. So on a 12% grade, uh, this 40,000 pound force becomes a force in the opposite direction of 4,764 pounds. Uh, and on a 15% grade, this is at 12%, on 15% grade, this will turn into 5,900 33 pounds. So significantly greater, almost 25% more uh, as a result of that change in the grade percentage. Another way of thinking about this, if you were to put this truck on a 15% grade, in order to have an equivalent test as it being on a 12% grade, you would take out nearly 8,000 pounds of weight uh, and then it would have that equivalent 4,764 pounds of force pulling it in the opposite direction that that parking brake using just those rear tires would have to be able to hold the entire vehicle uh, and prevent it from rolling downhill. Next, we get into the handling test. So the first one we're going to talk about is the understeer test. And in this case, we want the truck to understeer. And so you might be asking yourself, wait a minute, I thought understeer was bad. Why do we want this truck to understeer? Well, we want that to happen because we want the truck to always be leading the trailer, not the other way around. So when you're in a scenario where you're maneuvering and let's say you're going beyond your limits, you don't want that trailer coming out from behind the truck. You always want the truck to be leading the trailer. So at the limits, it should always be understeering. And so in this test, it's a small amount of understeer. Don't think of it as just pushing straight entirely. But what you want to see is that it does in fact understeer. So the test consists of a 300 foot circle and you drive around that circle with the front tire on the circle. And what you wanna do is increase the lateral Gs. Uh, you're gonna sweep from below 0.1 G to above 0.3 G. And as you increase your speed and you're holding that wheel on that white line, you want the steering angle to have to increase. And what that means is the amount of understeer that you have occurring is increasing as you increase lateral G. So that's what the test requires. You need to see an increase in understeer as you increase lateral G, and that ensures that this truck will always remain ahead of the trailer in those maneuvering scenarios so that the trailer is not whipping out from behind and dictating where your truck goes and putting you in an even more dangerous scenario. There is also a sway test, and think of this more as a comfort for the driver test rather than, you know, like a performance or an accident avoidance test. Uh, so it's more about making sure the driver is confident uh, in making maneuvers. So essentially what happens is you're driving at 100 kilometers per hour, 62 miles per hour, and you put a sharp input very quickly into that steering wheel. And what you want to see is that that trailer movement relative to your truck's movement, so of course you're going to change that location, you want to see that relationship dampen out very quickly. So instead of that trailer just kind of swinging back and forth, back and forth, after you did that quick movement, you want it to very quickly come back in line. And so you're 
looking at the damping ratio and ensuring that that's above 0.1 but essentially just what we're looking at here is making sure that that trailer follows the truck and it doesn't have a huge oscillation back and forth once you put in an input to the steering and that's to ensure driver comfort uh, while driving uh, at speed. Now there is a test which we could not demonstrate at Chelsea Proving Grounds and this is the highway grade Davis Dam test and it has to occur at a very specific location at a very specific temperature. So there is a strip of highway in Arizona and this highway has very high temperatures and a high grade and so it's an 11.4 mile stretch with a grade ranging from 3% to 7% averaging around 5% with a 45 to 65 mile per hour speed limit. So the truck needs to go up this grade from the bottom. The minimum temperature at the base at the start of the test needs to be 100 degrees Fahrenheit outside. The truck's already at temperature when it is starting this test and the truck has to remain above 35 miles per hour, uh, so it can't dip below 35 miles per hour for dualies or 40 miles per hour for single rear tire, and then you can go up to the speed limit for the tests. So also during this test, you have to have maximum AC running at the coldest temperature using outside air, so you're really putting a huge demand on the cooling system here. And in order to maintain this 35 to 40 mile per hour up to the speed limit, you're essentially going to be operating at wide open throttle uh, because of how big that force is pulling you back uh, from gravity. So the engine is pretty much wide open uh, and you're really testing the cooling system here because it has to travel up this huge grade uh, for 11 continuous miles. So it's quite a demanding test. And during this, you can't have any D-rate occur. You can't have any codes occur. You can't have the customer have any warnings uh, turn on, no fluid losses, so essentially the truck has to just be able to do this flawlessly, no problems whatsoever, get to the top and that is the end of the test. So very demanding on the cooling system. One of the interesting things learning about uh, this Ram 3500 uh, was that from the very beginning they said, hey, we're going to have a one meter wide radiator stuck in the front of this thing. Uh, that is our demand. It will be there. And then the design team kind of had to work around that massive radiator that they said, you know, from the be beginning we are putting this in there because we want to make sure that it has sufficient cooling. So how do we get a tow rating out of all of these tests? Well, it's actually a pretty simple equation. Basically, we're just looking at what's the combined weight of the truck and trailer that we were able to achieve all of these tests with, and then we are subtracting from that the weight of our truck. And that gives us the weight of the trailer that we can pull. So this is our gross combined weight rating. We're subtracting from that the tow vehicle's trailering weight, and that will give us our trailer weight rating. And so that's ultimately the number that a company is going to say, hey, our truck meets SAE J2807, and it has a trailer weight rating of X pounds that's what you can pull with it making you know these certain assumptions and it will be able to do everything that we have described in this video and have no trouble doing so now if you're curious to see the hands-on approach to this testing as well as interviews with the engineers involved please head over to the fast lane truck I will include a link and you'll see Tommy run through the various tests with the engineering team it's a completely different perspective on how this is all run and it's worth checking out also a huge thank you to Ram for providing access to their Chelsea Proving Grounds so we could actually get a live demonstration of how these tests are performed. If you have any questions or comments, of course feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.